an energetic, well, I do an energetic hello. Everyone else can do whatever they want. Ready? Yep. Hello, Lauren! <laughs> <laughs> hello! That really was energetic. There we go. <laughs> How did you get involved with it, though? Um, so, I was in drama with Lana, with Kate Newman, with Max Domini, like, so I knew it existed. Um, and then I went to see, I've, I've actually seen like a psychotic amount of shows, like, <laughs> for someone who wasn't involved, it's a little bit alarming. So I saw like Romeo and Juliet, I saw like all sorts, I saw so many. And then Miss Krellin was harassing me to audition. And I said, I have stage fright, that won't be happening. Um, so I never did, but I always knew about it and always went to see the shows. And then Dan basically dropped a bomb on my dad and was like, I don't want to do football anymore. I want to sing and dance. And <laughs> we were all like, okay, cool. And then I went and then I cried a lot and thought, this is for me. This is for me. Right. So yeah. And then I, I basically, Frankie said to me, because I knew her from school. She said, you do nice eyeliner. And I said, thank you. And she said, would you like to do makeup on 60 plus children once a week every summer? And I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was very. This was my first show. So 2013 was that. Yeah. And so you've been back ever since, and you you sort of have um, a small army as well. Just bring. So I bring someone new every every year. To be honest. <laughs> yes. It's like you got an apprentice every time. Yeah. I'm, yeah. It's like my um good. No, I was about to call it a good jester. Charlie will end my life. Uh, <laughs> it's a collaboration. That's what I'm going to call it. <laughs> What's your favourite production you've worked on? Uh, this is really, really hard because I've mostly done musicals. I'm never, I'm not always back for like spring. So I don't want to be really biased and obvious and say Legally Blonde because obviously I had a very large emotional attachment to that show. Um, I'd actually say, and this might be a little bit left field, it's Soho Cinders. That show slapped. That was a great <laughs> show. That was a... <laughs> It, joking. I loved it. Yeah, that honestly, at that at that point in time, I remember coming away from seeing that show and saying, "That's the best show you theatre have ever put on." I um, the energy. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Unreal. Yeah, it was uh, until Legally Blonde. I was like, "That's that's," and that's even like with all the shows that you know I remember being in and like you know yeah, Vision yeah. and all those guys. I was like, "That that was," it was a step up. It was. A, it it was really a, was. It really yeah. was. I think. I think they absolutely smashed it. I think they did so well that year. So yeah. well. Definitely. And then, what what was your favourite show that you've seen in your theatre? I think... Right now, it changes. <laughs> right now, it's DNA. Fair I play. loved it. I thought it was amazing. Oh, that's good. I absolutely loved it. I thought the kids were so, so good. Like, because I, I brought, again, I brought someone back with me. To see it. Yeah. Freya, who'd never met the kids, and she was literally like, they're unreal. And I was like, I know. I've been telling you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they they, they were. Yeah. Especially, again, I should probably shouldn't shout people out, but Sophie, Jesus. Is there a toughest show that you've worked on as well? Toughest? Yeah. I feel like Bugsy makeup was heavier for a lot more people than usual. Like things like Fame and Grease, it was like six or eight girls who had a bit more. Whereas because Bugsy was so themed... I feel like there was more people to put in something slightly heavier, so it was just a bit of more of a time constraint. And also, everyone hated the makeup, and I don't blame them. <laughs> <laughs> for you, what's it like in in the build up to to a show? So typically, people come in about four or five o'clock, and then you're there straight in doing people's makeup and stuff. What's that like? Like on the actual day? Yeah. So we uh, so usually wake up on my parents' sofa. Um, and then at some point around 12, 1 o'clock, we sort of go to the Burgess Hall and whoever I'm with will like set up everything, run through a list. Like usually we'll try and get pictures of what the girls make up look like on the first night or like a note or something. Um, and then, and then we just wait. I, I drink a ridiculous amount of slush puppies in show week. <laughs> a lot of my time doing uh and curly fries and then everyone arrives and it's just sort of chaos and you sort of black out for three hours and then you look up and everyone's in makeup and you think thank god like, <laughs> <laughs> you just, hope that. just hands out shut your eyes just go <laughs> Unbelievable. 
Is there is there one particular person or or thing that you you were really proud that you that you did? Like a look. Yeah. I really, really enjoyed what I did on Sissy for Elle. I had a few girls who were like friends with that year group ask me what it was. And like, I gave a little pop to James Gowland's girlfriend of the stuff that I'd use on her. Like, like people noticed it, which was really nice. Um, I'm trying to think who else. And I had a, a lot of fun every night with um, Grace in Soho. We always did something different. That was really fun. Yeah, it was good. And Emily, Emily during Fame, that was that was very fun. She was like, "Do whatever you want." You <laughs> um, have said that to the wrong person. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and you, you've you've um, been to the Fringe as well. You've helped out with the Fringe. So, what what's that like as as someone who's not performing as well? It's actually genuinely one of the best experiences of my life. Like genuinely, like. Because obviously it's really nice you get to see people every Thursday. I mean, I don't. Like, I don't get to see everyone all that often. But, like, when I do, it's great. But living with them and, like, hanging out for a week and, like, actually not hating everyone. Do you know what I mean? Like, everyone's got yeah. such good vibes, a really good mood. Everyone's feeling really creative. Seeing shows together. Do you know what I mean? You meet people that you might not have been close with during show week because you realise you've, bo like, both got a common interest in another show or something like that. I love it. I absolutely love it. And let's, let's talk about our group in... 2015 with Vision because was it me, you, and Sly that were in charge I, of a group? I, honest to God, think of the moment in that room where they said to us, "There's going to be a group led by Sly and Lauren," and all the kids collectively went, "Okay." Uh, and then they were like, "Okay, the first kid in that group is Liam O'Carroll," and I thought, "This is descending into chaos." Yes. <laughs> the group got finished, and I think they were like, "Hang on a minute." It's like, Sam's responsible. And I thought, you've done something here. <laughs> and, they put us, and I thought, this is going to end horribly. <laughs> what, what I love about that is because obviously I was, I was stage manager as well. So I was, <laughs> I was yeah. rarely there. <laughs> exactly. It was just, it, I was left to scratch bus tickets for kids that weren't mine. And somehow I kept them all alive. So let's, let's talk about the famous photo as well. Okay. Yeah, You're one of, probably one of your favourite photos. Talk, talk to us through it easily one of my favorite photos so right at the end of the week we i think we were like going out for our last day on the mile so outside everyone was taking photos and blah blah blah, blah. so we are uh, we decided to get a group photo um <laughs> our group went through many names i think oh, I'm, I'm gonna really mess this up now when i try and remember i think our first name was i thought you still worked at the cafe which is a line from vision that i don't think anyone remembers but i particularly liked it um and then, I can't remember what it was after that. It might have stayed that and been something before, but I can't remember. So we all got in a photo, the classic pose. Unbelievable. We all did it. Except for one member of our group. <laughs> the member of our group I thought we'd lost several times, uh, Morgan Short, um, who didn't really say or do very much. He's very, if, if you can believe it, was very quiet, um, very reserved. And he, during the photo, I don't even know why he was holding a baguette. Like a, like a tiny baguette. Um, and he dropped the baguette as the photo was being taken. And in the photo, you can see, please insert the photo here. The baguette isn't even touching the ground, like, and he's just staring after it. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Yeah, you do do a bit more there, but then makeup and whatnot. You you do help with the creative side as well. You, you do come in and sort of act like a dramaturg, but... The main thing that you do as well is you help out with posters and backstage videos. Um, let's talk about the posters first. Okay. Because um, you help design this lovely thing, didn't you? I did do this. That is my handwriting. Yeah. Ooh. That is wild to see that on. We're there. wearing Lauren. Yep, that's me. <laughs> is that is that really your handwriting? Is it the right blonde? Yeah, that's my handwriting. Yeah. Oh wow, that's cool. Yeah. Thanks. Very cool. <laughs> um, I didn't know yeah. that. Basically, I got hot my hot my hands on a what's it called a whack on and went nuts. So I just was like, I really want to design the poster. I really want to design the poster because I felt very emotionally attached, as Sam is very aware. Uh, <laughs> so so I, I just I like had an idea one day, bought a, a like a blank diary, and then just scanned it into my computer and drew all over it like it was L's. Like ever since I first saw people doing backstage videos when I first joined, I was like, this is a thing that I will continue. Forever, um, and then the last couple of years, you've really 
like push push the boat out with <laughs> with these amazingly good backstage videos. This is just me getting the most out of that two thirds of a film degree I have. <laughs> that is literally it. Like, let me at him with a camera and some editing, and I'm having a good time. We stepped it up, or well, you stepped it up, and you directed an incredible backstage video for Legally Blonde as well. I think we were all at the pub. Well, I think we were all there, weren't we? How good is that start of the story? <laughs> we're all at the pub. Yeah. I think you, I think Peter, you were there or you just left. I can't remember. I think it and we started to like rummage around for ideas because obviously that's my main focus. I'm not focusing on the show at all. I'm thinking about what the backstage video is going to be. Um, and I can't remember. Someone said something, and I went, "It's Love Island." <laughs> it has to be Love Island because everyone had just gone nuts for Love Island the year before. Like it was crazy. Sam Morris, I posing. I photoshopped him onto the Love Island background, and the rest was history. To be honest. <laughs> I just thought, this is it. I saw him there with the background, and I thought, this is what we need. Yeah. And everyone was so enthusiastic. That was the best part. Everyone was like, absolutely. You were like, Peter was like, I'm getting in a dress. Yeah, it was great <laughs> on me. Come in. It was absolutely hilarious. Honestly, it's, uh, that is the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I know I made it, <laughs> but it is the funniest thing I've ever seen. It was, it was great. It was very, very good. It, I think, to us, my standout performance... Was actually no. There's two, two stand-up performances. From so the first moment is Sam Morris with Emmett, Absolutely. because that him getting on that seat is just it's like forty-five seconds. It's unbelievable. Oh, it's it's just it's just brilliant. And then, and then the other one <laughs> is your dad no, not actually no. banging the, the gavel together. No, he's like pretending to hit it, but he's not actually hitting. So, Lauren, do you have um, any more favourite memories? God, there's so much. There's actually so much. The drag show at the last Edinburgh Fringe, that was very fun, where all the boys got in drag. That was brilliant. Oh my god, there's so many. I'd say Greece is a good one because obviously Dan was in that and he cried for the look cried. He sang for the first time and me and Mum were like in bits. That was nice. Yeah. Because Dan obviously did cry during vision as well. Oh don't even what? I've seen that video so many times it makes me very sad. <laughs> what, what 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 is it like seeing seeing your brother on stage and doing stuff like that? Without getting really soppy. Dan is obviously my favourite person on the planet. And it's nice because I'm just really proud of him because it's something I think I wish I'd done a little bit. I have stage fright though, so it would not have worked. But I do wish I had, and I think it's nice to watch him do it because I think he's so bloody good at it. And then seeing him like stay involved and like write things for the kids and stuff like that, and seeing the kids all support him and like you lot, it's just really nice. I just love it, and yeah. that, I think that's why I got so involved because I thought if they, these people obviously care for Dan as much as I do, these have got to be good people. Yeah, and I've not left the cult since. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and let, let's let's talk about the value of, of hair and makeup. How important is it to a production? Do you know what? Controversial. Not that important. <laughs> 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 I love what I do. I absolutely love it. But let's be honest. If you're watching Adina Menzel singing "Wicked," I don't care if she's green or brown. I don't care because she's a bot. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, you can enhance a show massively. Things like Lion King, things like Cats. It's wicked, and you probably couldn't do it without it. But I think it's just nice to make the kids feel confident. Or more confident, do you know what I mean? Hair and stuff's probably more... Like, makeup, I don't. I just don't know if the audience see it that much. So I think it, it does more for us and the kids, like, to get them really, like, invested and involved in the world because they all look either the same or they've got the same vibe or their costume and everything really puts them in the mood for it, I guess. But like as an audience member, I, I suppose I've not I've not been to see a musical like Legally Blonde or something like that with where it's just people, if that makes any sense. Mm, yeah. Where I've gone, oh my God, that makeup is amazing or has changed the way I feel about this or blah, blah, blah. Do you know what I mean? Because I think in the theatre, a lot of, they do their own makeup. So I think... They don't, they don't often have people like us. I, I feel like um, the, like where if makeup is done well you don't notice it exactly that's it's kind right? of just meant to be 
something there to like exist as it should look. Yeah. Like you should go, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So for like you say, for like real people kind of shows, it's more just like you you know, you're not gonna come away going, Wow, that the like the makeup artist for that show was just like accident like that's not something you're gonna be clocking. But it will be, you know, like I say, it's probably them doing their own makeup because they're that bit older and whatever. But I, I think it's actually a really important thing because if you don't have makeup, I mean, the guys should probably wear makeup too, to be fair. But I mean, that's it's difficult to at that age to, to persuade that. But to stop the faces being washed out, you know, um, under that's under lights. Important. So yeah. that's, I think that's important. Mm. And the boys actually, I've noticed, especially in recent years, are very like, yeah, cool. I'll I put whatever on. I don't really mind. I'm not bothered which is very refreshing. I love that. Um, but yeah, as you say, it's kind of like, I I don't want to notice. If you're going to do the makeup for the audience, you've got to paint for the back row and then the front row are going to think you've done clowns. Yeah. So I don't want to do anything too wild and crazy because um, I don't want to take away from it. But I do feel like the most important thing for me, I think with hair and makeup is the atmosphere in those rooms before the show. Yeah. It's like my happy place. Like, with music on, with the kids. Like, the kids would always sit and hang out with us and, like, talk about makeup or join in. And I think that's that's where it's most important at the moment for the kids of this age. That's such a good shout, yeah. Together and, like, hang out and talk and chat and take their mind off if they're nervous or run lines with each other or whatever. I love that. That's, I think, probably where people don't notice the change, but that's probably where, for me, that's where it happens. And I think you're right because, um, you know, you know it, generally it's the girls who have to sit through the hair and makeup far more than the boys do like sam said earlier the boys are off often off singing or at least we were when we were in it singing you know to a piano or whatever or just you know having a bit of a laugh around whatever so they're getting like sort of warmed up psyched up by doing that whereas the girls you know they have you and charlie or whoever else you bring along to kind of you know to chat to and kind of feel confident and you know have, sing to some music and you know like you say, go over lines or whatever they need to do. And that's, so I think it's really good in that respect too. Mm. What you both yeah, I love it. that. I love that. Usually in that room. Yeah. I think, um, yeah, I'm going to latch on to your point about the sort of confidence. Nick, mm-hmm. I think things step up. We spoke to, spoke to a few people about this, uh, saying that once they've got the costume on, once they've got the hair, once they've got the makeup, it's, their game steps up really and their, their performance yeah. levels go to a new level. So I do think from that perspective, it is super important. Uh, as you said, the kids are confident. Yeah, I think they come, they kind of come alive a little bit in their costume, which I imagine is feel probably feels totally normal because then you're suddenly you just are that person that you've been pretending to be for weeks and weeks and weeks. And like when it's finally all together, I imagine that's really like a okay, no, I am doing this. I've got this. I am this person. It's going to be fine. Yeah, I mean, we had that same chat with Trish actually when we did our her interview the other day. It was. Um... I know it was, uh, and but you know, I again, you know, it's, it, that's that's the moment when they it goes from they might have smashed the rehearsals out, but that moment they put on their character, you know, their costume, and they get their hair and makeup done. Suddenly, they are that person. Yeah, it's so real, and they're like, okay, this is it. Any advice to volunteers or potential volunteers? Do it, please do it. <laughs> it's very rewarding. Like it is really, really rewarding. Like. I would rather be spending my free time helping other people discover things they love than just sat in, I mean, I do that a lot. I sit in my house and I watch things, but like, I think it's so much more rewarding for me to be like, I'm enabling someone else to really live something they might not get to do if we didn't turn up. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so that's, I think it's really important. And I think it's done a lot for me as well. Like, as I say, I didn't, I have no idea what I was doing in nine, ten. I no clue. What GCSEs? Who knows? Whatever ones I feel like, I guess. I think it's not what I wanted to do because I just I think all the things I thought I was reasonably good at weren't real jobs, I guess. Um, and then when Frankie asked me to get involved with Greece, I was like, oh, like doing makeup for people, like that's a thing, whatever. And then she was always so encouraging, and the kids were always so encouraging, and were like, yeah, practice on me, or can you do my prom makeup? Which it still makes me cry when kids ask me to do their prom makeup. I don't know why. Um, and stuff like that. And I thought, hang on a minute, maybe this is a job. I applied for that job in Mac with all the, like, literally so much support from everyone. It was, literally everyone was asking me about it, even though it was, they, they were doing a cabaret and I, they were still asking me about me. And I was like, no, <laughs> I don't want to talk about me right now. But they were so nice, like, so understanding and so kind. And then when I got it, everyone was literally over the moon for me. And I was like, this is crazy. Um, and then obviously I built up enough confidence to 
this is a job and I can actually do this as a real career. And then I moved to London to do it. Like, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> like, what the hell? I did make up with Casey Dooley. What? Yeah. <laughs> That's really crazy. Like, it's madness. Yeah. But, you know, and I think, I, d- I just don't think I'd be here if I didn't get involved because I just don't think I would have had the like exposure to doing it. It could change people's lives. I know it does. I see that it does. Mm. But I saw Dan is a different person to the person he was before. Both good. <laughs> but I prefer this one. Do you know what I mean? He's yeah. just like so him. And I think that's really important for a lot of kids that you see. Like Gus Stavro, the quietest little mouse. And now look at him. Do you know what I mean? I think it's amazing. So, yeah. yeah. It, it, and it's nice to be involved in that. It's nice to see that happen. Yeah, because you, I mean, you've, like, like you say, you've, you know, you've been been around since basically since I was in youth theatre. Not that I knew you back then, because you were just coming to watch your mates in youth uh, in you know the shows and stuff. But you you would have seen loads of different people grow up, both you know people your age, our age, and and then younger lots too. You know, it's actually mad. Like, th- like again, like people like Sophie. I feel like I watched her get born. I didn't, <laughs> but I feel like I did. I mean, I feel very attached. <laughs> like, it's crazy. Like, again, like, Morgan, people, like, when I was with them when they were younger and watching them, like, finish school and, like, take their GCSEs, it's, it's weird. I feel like I'm someone's mum. It's weird. <laughs> I don't know. I like it, but it's weird. <laughs> well, you all probably feel like that, aren't they? Yeah, I, I, think it, I think as a volunteer, you get that kind of, you, you see them grow up. And so it does, fit, you do have, like, this sort of maternal, paternal kind of attachment, you know. I just want all their dreams to come true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much Lauren appreciate uh, you you're taking the time to talk to us and we'll see you next time yes we will yeah <laughs> see you later bye bye see you later Lauren bye